When working with images in Pygame, you often need to modify them in real time. Luckily, Pygame provides built-in functionality to enable this, which is the transform method. This method has a few different transformations, but the three most common ones that I regularly use in my games are scale, rotate, and flip. I begin here with some boilerplate code. The main thing I'm doing is loading in the dinosaur image, and then I'm blitting it out onto the screen. Now, if I run this, we'll be able to see that little dino image coming up over here. The first transform that I'll apply to this is going to be scale. We go back up here to where we loaded the image of the dinosaur, and just below that, I can create a second image, which will be dino2. This is equal to pygame.transform.scale. And then the arguments, well, the first one is going to be the initial image that I take in, which is the original dinosaur image. And the second argument is going to be the width and the height. So I'll specify 50 for the width and 200 for the height. Now I go into the game loop and just make sure that I'm blitting this onto the screen. I'll say screen.blit dino2 and the coordinates are going to be 350. If I run this again, I get my original dinosaur image and then I have this squished down version. The reason that happens is because when I scale it using this transform method, I don't maintain the original aspect ratio of the image. I simply specify the new width and height. The original image gets squashed and stretched to fit these new sizes. If I want to maintain the aspect ratio, then I need to first of all work out the width and height of the original image. We'll say w is equal to dino.get underscore width, and then h is equal to dino.get underscore height. Now I can update the transform method and rather than passing in fixed sizes for the width and height, I can pass in those variables. I'll say w multiplied by 0.5 and h multiplied by 0.5. This will maintain the aspect ratio and it's just going to half the original image. If I run this again, I now end up with a smaller version of the original. It's exactly the same proportions, but it's just half the size. Another way of doing this is to use the scale by method. And this time, rather than specifying a width and height, I just specify the scale factor, which was 0.5. If I run this again, I get the exact same result as before, but with fewer lines of code, because now I don't need to calculate the width and the height of the original. The scale by method was only added in Pygame 2.1.3, and at this moment it's an experimental feature. But prior to this function, the previous approach was preferred. Next, we can take a look at rotation. We use a transform method, and then it's rotate. The arguments here are first of all the image that we want to rotate, and secondly is going to be the angle. The angle of rotation is anti-clockwise. So if we pass in 5 degrees for example, and we run this, then the image rotates 5 degrees counterclockwise. If you want to rotate clockwise, you just change this to a negative value, and now the image is rotated in the other direction. The last transform method I want to have a look at is flip. This method allows us to flip the image in the x and the y directions. We change the rotate method to flip, and then we pass in the arguments. The first one is the image that we want to flip. Then there are two Boolean values. The first one is going to be flipping in the x direction and the second in the y direction. If I say true for the first one and false for the second one, then you'll see that we have the exact same dinosaur, but it's now flipped to be facing the other way. Likewise, we can get rid of this, change this one to false, and now flip it up and down instead. Now it's the same dinosaur, but he's standing on his head. This method is a great way to reduce the number of sprites needed in the game. I use this regularly for character sprites that move left and right. I load in only the images facing in one direction, then I flip the image if I need it to face the other way. One thing to be aware of is that some of these transform methods, specifically rotate and scale, will reduce the quality of the image. To demonstrate this, I'm going to get rid of this flip method, and I'm going to paste in some code that I put together previously. Now what this does is it goes through a for loop 10 times, it then transforms the original dinosaur image using the rotate method, but it stores it back into the dinosaur image, so it overrides it. It doesn't create dino2 as before, it just overrides the existing image. So each time we go through this loop, we take the same image and we rotate it again. Now, for the degrees, I've only got one here, but I have a multiplier that flips between minus one and one. So this basically means that at each iteration of the loop, it's going one degree clockwise, one degree counterclockwise, and back and forth ten times. If I now comment out this dino2 because we don't have one and run this code again, you'll see the result. Each time we rotate an image, it loses a little bit of its quality. So by doing it over and over, the result is going to be a deteriorating image. To avoid this, we make sure that we always keep the original image as a variable and we use a separate variable for the modified image, which is why I had dino2 in the previous examples. Run this code again, but I show dino2 back on the screen. 
We will see that the image has maintained the quality, it's just rotated by one degree against the original. That covers the common transform methods that you can use in your games. If this video was helpful, then please leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one.